this uh, not even raptor not even you well, I, I guess this would be the raptor rock but it's it's a weird version of it yeah, and then we have the last one yeah just a full on zoo with one hellfire right, now what right. do you think about hellfire and zoo generally yeah, the Hellfire, I guess, is something to uh, combat Patron Warrior. We saw that when Patron was at its absolute peak. But yeah, like you said, uh, no Dr. Boom, but does have a Sea Giant in there, has the Malganus. And uh, yeah, like you said, with the, the Raptor Rogue, even has the uh, Dark Iron uh, Skulker there. I believe that's what it's called. Uh, with the 5 drop guard right there, just to uh, provide some sort of tempo because you're not going to be running too many spells. And uh, yeah, really interesting lineup. Uh, I, typically, when I've seen uh, Chinese players run the um, the Unearth Raptor Rogue, they typically like to play it a little bit more aggressively, you know, putting those cold bloods in there, which we saw in that deck. Uh, one thing before we go on, I want to ask you a very specific question. Uh, mm -hmm. We. Uh, Firebat, when we interviewed him, said that one of the most common pairings is to put uh, Druid and Paladin together. And in fact, today, uh, Dog, Tice, and Kimmy put, uh, you know, paired those two classes together. In one of their lineups, they have Druid and Paladin together, except for Brawros. Brawros is the only person that puts that together. So, uh, what, what are the merits of that, and uh, why do you think these pl uh, three players did and one player didn't? So, uh, the reason I think that is... You have Paladin, which is extremely strong against the mid-range decks, the shoe style decks, even the anti-control decks. But what Paladin really falls to is Freeze Mage and Rogue. Mm -hmm. And now, what do we have that's really strong against Freeze Mage and Rogue? And that would be the Druid. So the two decks really complement each other really well because they counter each other's counters, kind of. Because if we look at what counters Druid, that would generally just be Sue and... Uh, and I guess even mid-range Paladin. Uh, so you have a strong deck against, against that, and then you have the strong deck against the Freeze and, and Rogue there. But just to talk a bit about the Sioux uh, with Hellfire. Now, I generally feel like Hellfire and Sioux is kind of a card that is only good when you're behind. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Sioux is actually not a deck that can uh, be behind and come back easily. That's generally not something that... I, I feel like like happens, uh, whereas Rogue and Freeze Mage can definitely pull, you know, comebacks, even Patron can pull comebacks. I just feel like with Sue, you just have to, you know, be aggressive and, and play for the board. And, and I guess adding a Hellfire in doesn't fit my playstyle at least, but I guess if you're playing a mirror match, it would be very strong. And I could see that being strong against uh, Paladin as well, but we're going to game by one here, Freeze Mage versus Rogue. Now... If this would be a standard uh, oil rogue, I would actually give the oil rogue the advantage. But against this unearthed raptor rogue, I am going to be quite confident in the freeze made by dog. Right, right. And, I mean, we've seen a lot of death rattles in, for instance, Zoo, but uh, Freeze Mage still doesn't have too much trouble dealing with all those death rattles. Um, obviously, it's pretty tough to deal with something like, you know, an Unearth Raptor that copied a Nerubian Egg, for instance. But uh, I feel like a dog is pretty experienced with these Freeze Mage deck and will find a way to kind of deal with it. It will be kind of on him to you know, be able to recognize that this is that type of rogue. Though, I mean, the deck isn't... I mean, the deck is finding some popularity on the ladder, so I imagine he will uh, be able to sniff that out pretty quickly. I think so, yeah. Um, so the decks play a lot... very, very different. The, uh, the... the combo rogue, I guess, with the oils, essentially can play like a hunter if you wanted to. You can be eviscerating phase, mm. having a huge weapon. People even play Assassin's Blade, low step, But those things are cut to make room for the eggs and the raptor. So this rogue here is actually kind of played like almost a Sioux style deck. Right, and right, what right. does Freeze Mage excel against? That's Sioux style decks. Yeah, that, that would seem to be something in Dog's favor. I just want to remind everyone that uh, the players were given you know, an invite to come to China to participate uh, at the site uh, for the land, but uh, for many players it was just too long a journey and uh, too much hassle to go through the process of getting a visa, so we do see Dog playing from his home there. Looks like it's basically the middle of the night, so it might be a difficult match for him. Obviously Braros in the studio right there. And uh, one thing that Braros could use to his advantage is that cold blood, maybe to get some, you know, burst out of nowhere. Uh, and it's kind of burst that Dog maybe will want, he might not be expecting that kind of thing, you know? I think this is kind of a fun situation because you build a deck almost exclusively around the uh, Raptor and now you're just going to play like a spider tank. 
right, right. But that's that's what you have to do, you know. That's that's absolutely what you have to do. And I think it would be incorrect to go over anything except the Raptor now. But it just it feels a bit painful when you're adding five cards to supplement mm. this one card, and then you're just playing as a three four and. Generally, that's often worth it. Yeah, like I, I've yeah. been losing games when you have coin, uh, when you have egg, coin, raptor on turn four. That's just devastating. Right. I mean, that's kind of the power of the card too, as well, right? Oh. If it was like a three-two, and then you got to just copy a random death rattle, it would be kind of strong, but not nearly as strong as it is now. Just because you know, worst case scenario, you're getting a solid three drop, and uh, best case scenario, you're getting an excellent minion. So uh, that's kind of why this deck is even. Uh, spawned in the first place, right? I mean, Rogue never even had... I mean, Tempo Rogue is something that hasn't existed for, you know, two years uh, since basically 2013. Um, there were some variants of it in, you know, early uh, 2014, but uh, just this card alone, being able to somewhat revive this deck is... Uh, it's kind of just showing, like, how strong it is, basically, because without it, you'd never see this kind of Rogue. It's exciting, yeah, and I think especially now with the Tomb Pillager coming out, the 5-4 that has a death rattle, put a coin in your hand, I think that would work really well with this sort of combo, but people are now just figuring out, okay, a lot of these new cards require a whole new deck oh. to be played around them, is, uh, and apparently... Is, yeah, Dog must have disconnected or something, because obviously he would at least ping there. Um, we're getting word at least that there's a, a Raptor bug... Uh, Mm -hmm. Something that has been happening, but we've been talking about yeah. Um, so the raptor is good on its own, no question. But is it good enough to build a whole deck around it? Take out five, six cards that have been in rogue and put five, six cards that have have not been in rogue back in. Uh, and it seems to have potential. We know we were talking about uh, in, in TGT if Flame Maker was worth building a whole deck around it, and it turned out to be worth it to play a whole deck on Playmaker. Uh, I guess another one that, that's been uh, kind of played like that was the Grim Patron. No question that was worth it, and, and now Reno seems to be worth it as well. At least in the Warlock. Yeah, so it looks like um, that, that's definitely a good question to ponder, but uh, looks like uh, Bra Rose was kind of just playing a practice match there, just uh, playing it out, you know, testing his uh, shutter placement for the next match potentially, but uh, he, he knew that this was going to be a regame. I mean, it's there was no chance that Dog was uh, had like nothing to do there that entire time, so we are going to get a rematch, I'm assuming, uh, we don't have any word yet, but it looks like that's going to be the case, and uh, probably Dog was not aware of the DC, sometimes, you know, you just, the uh, there's no indication at all other than, like, wait a second, this turn is taking a long time, the rope hasn't appeared yet, what's going on? And, um, yeah, that's probably... Well, we didn't see Dog flinch at all, and uh, I imagine we're going to be going into another game. Uh, I gotta be f feel bad for Brawl Rose, however. I mean, he didn't get to copy any Death Rattles with his Unearth Raptor, but uh, he was br he was putting up a pretty you know significant board there. He had the uh, Coin SI7 Agent to take out the Lord Ho Loot Hoarder, then played the ra Raptor on Curve, albeit without the Death Rattle, but then, you know, that into Shredder, into Second Shredder, into Cold Blood, you know, it wasn't that bad of a situation, and it might have been a difficult time for Dog. Yeah, I think the hand was kind of mediocre, there was no egg. The egg is the, the big thing against Freeze Mage here. Uh, but to talk a bit about it, I feel like Braros actually gained more than Dark about this, because you can mulligan for the egg specifically, and mm -hmm. you know what to keep, because you don't have to keep stuff like Backstab, which you might have kept otherwise. If you thought it could be potentially Tempo Mates, I mean, it's Dark, so it's probably going to be Freeze Mates. He's known for Freeze Mates over Tempo Mates. Uh, but yeah, yesterday the NA server was down for the majority of the day and EU was having a lot of problems. I played myself two pro matches yesterday against Super JJ and, uh, and Josiah and uh, we had three regames where on turn two or three there was just a disconnect and we had to start over. Thankfully in that case though, the deck list had been known for two weeks so we knew exactly what we were playing against. But in this case, I mean, Dog had no idea, and and Browners had no idea. So now, there's no there's no way that it will be 100% fair on both players because you know, right. one deck will be more Mulligan specific <laughs> in terms of what what it will face, and and mm. so one player is going to get a slight advantage, and that's just a very unfortunate thing. I think the main part of it is that there is going to be a wing 
out tonight. So that may may be a part of it. Yeah, it could be some complications uh, related to that. Uh, who do you think has a bigger advantage here, having gotten that information? I tend to lean toward uh, Braros just because you know, Doug. Even if you're whether you're playing against an oil rogue or you're playing against this uh, kind of different zoo kind of a build the board type of uh, Arnoth Raptor rogue, you kind of want to mulligan for similar cards, right? You want uh, a bit of uh, removal, mostly just card draw, actually. Mostly you're just looking for card draw and then uh, some other pieces to be able to deal with your opponent's board. Whereas um, now Braros knows that he doesn't have to deal with any sort of early minions. Uh, obvi I mean, I doubt he thinks this is going to be the aggro uh, freeze mage. Though, I mean, on the other hand, I guess we've seen Dog play around with some stuff. We saw him play Tempo Mage in the uh, qualifiers for BlizzCon uh, in that last call tournament, I believe. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I guess it could go both ways, but I'm leaning toward it helps Braros a bit more. Yeah, we talk about specific cards that you would mulligan differently. Uh, it would come down to, for Doc, do you keep Arcane Intellect? You would keep uh, Luftwater, Novice Engineer, Mad Scientist, Acolyte 100%. Just comes down to Doomsayer and Arcane Intellect. And now, if you had no idea, if you were facing Oil Rogue, you'd want the Arcane Intellect. And if you were facing Raptor Rogue, you'd want the Doomsayer. So, it's a minor thing though. You wouldn't be in a bad situation if you had Doomshare or Arcane Intellect. So, it's a very minor thing. But for Braros, though, you know, keeping Lothep, he kept Lothep now. You know, you would never keep Lothep if you didn't know this was Freeze Mage. Right, if this right. could be Tempo Mage, you'd be, you know, years behind. Uh, so, yeah, especially, going fact, first. especially going first with the Lothep would be a disaster. I think it's even iffy now, you know, knowing it's, it's Freeze Mage. But yeah. Um, so you, I actually really don't like keeping Talnos here. Did he keep Talnos really in his opening hand? He did, yeah. I really dislike it. But huh. uh, at least Braros, you know, he, he he could keep the egg. I suppose he, he was he, looking for this opportunity, right? He was, uh, maybe Dog wouldn't want to ping and just play out the Loot Hoarder or Mad Scientist. And then from there, Braros could uh, get a Raptor into his hand to copy and get double card draw, uh, which is reasonable, I suppose. So that's, I mean, yeah. Yeah, let's say there's a 50% chance that Dog will ping, and you don't have the Raptor. So maybe 1 in 3 or 1 in 4 that you'll top deck the Raptor. You have 3 chances to get it. Right. No, yeah, four, it chance, seems... 4 chances to get it. So it's yeah, maybe 1 in 6 that this will actually pull off. And Right. Seems pretty optimistic, I have to agree. Uh, I mean, you're keeping the Lothep as well, so it's like... You know, how off, how likely is it that you exactly get that Raptor? Um, you know, something like an SI wouldn't pair too well with Thanos either, so... Uh, I guess he figures that worst case scenario, he gets to draw a card and maybe draw into a three drop. So uh, it looks like it's working out kind of okay for him. He does have a pretty solid curve, you know, uh, you know, four drop and a five drop and a six drop. And uh, this is one of the bigger uh, things actually about this situation is that um, dog. I mean, Braros isn't you know scared at all to play this pile to shredder just on curve. It is kind of strange to see two secrets out of, you know, a non freeze mage, but um yeah, it's still something to think about. You know, Bravos had no hesitation here. Mm hmm When you got one form free out of the uh pile to shredder, you know, uh, out of the Mad Scientist and then he plays another one on curve, so he, he can pretty much guarantee that uh Braros uh, the the dog doesn't have an arcane intellect or or a uh Aklar pain, most likely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to, to talk a bit about the scenario here, um, the turn 6 Sylvanas. It's an interesting scenario. It's kind of like Mirror the DA against Freeze Mates because, okay, you get some presence on the board, but you also give them a chance to just get a free board clear. And what I'm talking about there is if you are a Freeze Mate, you can just play out a Doomsayer and then fireball Sylvanas. And that makes the Sylvanas steal a Doomsayer and immediately wipe the board. And there's nothing you can do about that. So it is risky to play around it. But now this is a tough call. Do you go for Do you go for Paldis Sweater? Do you go for um, Defender of Arcus? Or do you go for the Raptor? Yeah, this is I'm even of... leaning, yeah. I'm even leaning towards uh Defender of Arcus here. This is pretty crazy. Typically you don't see um 
you know, Rogue having this many minion options, but obviously this is a completely different deck than what we're used to. But yeah, just a wealth of options here. You know, can go for that Raptor, can go for the Shredder, can go for the Defend of Argus to make his board, you know, not vulnerable to Flame Strike. Uh, the Savannah, like you said, is pretty risky. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, with this Rogue, you're not typically worried about setting up your hero power. Uh, when you're playing the Oil Rogue, setting up your hero power for future turns can be pretty valuable, especially because you might need that 2 mana, and uh, when you're comboing things like that Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, but uh, in this case, you know, getting that hero power set up isn't nearly as valuable, valuable I would say. Yeah, that's to say he wish he had life tap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll have that have that happen with Finlay Miracle Temple. He's just using that as two damage to the face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was playing against Cyan yesterday, and he was playing Rogue against my Freeze Mage, and he actually played Vitrate on Curve to Face. It's an interesting scenario. Yeah, we I think it, there's some merit to it. Yeah, we saw Brawl Rose kind of hovering over it too. He's just like, well, I might not have a better chance than this, and unlikely I'm going to use it on a minion. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Although he could use it on a Doomsayer potentially. So, uh, you know, it could go either way. But yeah, looking not too bad for Brawl Rose. Obviously, Dog gets a discount here on all this uh, stuff, uh, which oh. can be pretty good with the Antonidas Frost Nova. But uh, I don't, you might not even commit to that. And Dog's hand isn't that big, whereas Brawl Rose has so many options. Yeah, he is almost able to uh, just steal this Emperor. Wouldn't that be something? I wonder if he's going to ignore it. But I think if you are going for Lothep, you kind of want to be going for the Coldblood as well. Or Coldblood on the Egg. But I want to go, down back, go, go back to turn 2 again. And going for a Thalnos uh, as a Raptor Rogue is kind of like life tapping on turn 2 as a Zoo. Right. The scenario is very similar. You know? Right, right. You get one, you get one draw. But yeah, uh, now with Lothar down, what can he really do? Dog really do here? Yeah, he can Frost Nova. Discount. Yeah. Yeah, he can Frost Nova to uh, prevent this board from doing anything. I think Bra Rose was was uh, thinking the entire time that he wanted to play uh, Lothar on turn seven to prevent his opponent, as we see the Raptor come out and uh, copy the Death Rattle of that Shredder. But uh, I think Brawros wanted to, or he was planning on doing this Lothib turn on turn 7 all along, just to prevent any sort of 3-mana spell like uh, Secret or, you know, like the Frost Nova coming out. And that's typically when you, when you want to do it, right? You don't want to uh, give them the 8 mana to be able to play those spells, but unfortunately it didn't work out for him because Dog had the discount the turn before. And uh, in the end, Brawros just kind of st stuck to his guns, went with it. Because, you know, the rest of his options weren't that great. It looks like Brawl is really not wanting to play that Sylvanas and uh, commit to that. I don't blame him, yeah. Doomsayer Frost, uh, Fireball just messes everything up. But what can he do, though? Like, what, what options are there? I mean, I assume he... I mean, he could just go really, really aggressive right now. Maybe just go for uh, Defender of Argus and uh, double Cold Blood Hero Power and just try to get as much damage as possible. Um, like you said, it's just uh, not the greatest matchup. If Dog... We see Dog has the Flame Strike, which would, would just completely reset the board and, you know, put Braros in a really horrible spot. So, I mean, I imagine you just kind of go all in and hope that he doesn't have uh, the resource to deal with your boards and just hope you can kind of steal a win that way. I mean, yeah, the, the scenario is, is okay. You can't play around Doomsday Frost Nova. That's just something that Sue just really can't do if, unless you have an egg. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can't really be playing on Flame Strike, so. Right. You just kind of have to be praying that he doesn't have the Flame Strike, but we know that Dog does have the Flame Strike, and this is. Feeling exactly like you'd see some, exactly like what you'd see out of a Sioux type of deck. But what does he get now? Is there going to be a Millhouse? Loot Horror is okay ish. Yeah, Loot Horror is kind of okay because you get to refill your, your hand, obviously. Uh, what does Dog go for here? The Ping or the Loot Horror? I imagine he might go for the Loot Horror just to increase his options, but uh, looks like he disagrees and is looking toward that Ping. Uh, now he's going to reconsider. What would you do here? Oof, it's a tough call. Uh, I actually like the ping, and the, for the reason is that you have a very solid play next turn with a uh, Cone of Cold, uh, Antonidas Cone of Cold here, uh, Coin, uh, Frostbolt. But now it looks like he just have, has to go all in, and I don't blame him here. At this point, do you just play the Sylvanas? Because, I mean, you've already gotten your board wiped, so it doesn't really. You're not really too worried about that anymore. You just kind of want to put as much pressure on as possible. And uh, at this point, I mean, if you get your board wiped, and you're pretty much done anyway, regardless of, you know, how it happens. 
So yeah, looks like he is going to finally commit to that Salvanus, realizes that, you know, he has nothing to lose anymore, and just going to get that 5 health creature on the board, which could cause some problems. Absolutely. Uh, but in this case, it felt like what he needed, needed to really push <laughs> was... Quintuple uh... Rocket Shark, I'm sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> That's never happened before. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I, I felt like Lothab, uh, a Lothab Cold Blood combo was needed to really right. push, let's say, push 10, 15 plus damage and then go for that again. But a lot of shocks here, yeah. <laughs> this is so distracting, but it's so awesome at the same time. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, yeah, Dog can go for the Antinitis uh, Kona Cold Coin Frostbolt, which is uh, pretty risky, obviously, with that Sylvanas, but will provide him a lot of fireballs. Um, what were you saying? I'm sorry. I was just talking about the uh, the wind condition being the Lothep Cold Blood combo, and mm -hmm. that seems to just have passed a bit now. Uh, right. I guess the other wind condition is that the Freeze Mace doesn't draw any, any, uh, any cycle, and he, the Freeze Mace just runs out of, out of steam. But that just hasn't happened here, mm -hmm. and, and Dog is looking really solid. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it looks like Dog is just going to freeze everything here, freeze the board, freeze the face, and grab three fireballs while he's at it. And uh, Bra Rose, he cannot kill his own Sylvanas, and he also cannot kill this Antoninus, so it looks like he's going to be in a world of hurt the next turn. Seems to be. I think Dog is just going to be pushing face but at this point. It's a tough call for Bra Rose. Uh, he just got a very unfortunate matchup here in the game, but one. Right, right, yeah, just just a really bad matchup. Like you said, it's almost it's almost worse than the uh, Zoo matchup because you don't have that Malganus to be able to aid you and to provide mm -hmm. that wall, and uh, just a few other options that are in the Zoo that isn't in this uh, in this uh, Unearthed Raptor Rogue. But yeah, that's looking like it's probably going to be it over the next couple of turns. I'm pretty sure you don't run any heal. Uh, in this sort of rogue, uh, you run a couple taunts to get in the way, but that's about it. But um, yeah, Varos looks like he's uh, experiencing a bit of lag to add insult to injury. Gonna just hero power up, and uh, Dog can just sit here and fireball the face, uh, generate a couple more fireballs, and then yeah, he has the requisite damage over a couple turns to do so. Yeah, the. It's one of the things you do cut, actually, uh, if you are playing that rogue. The standard oil rogue generally runs one heal bot and one low tip, um, but that just isn't an option here. Oh. He pings his own Athenitis. Yeah, that's an interesting play. Just to make sure that Braros can't, you know, maybe take some fireballs and make something crazy happen. Uh, Braros is going to need something like a Kazan Mystic here, which I don't believe is in his deck. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. No way to stop Dog from using his fireballs. No way to heal up out of range. No way to kill Dog right now. And so He can the... Proc, the, proc the Ice Block, though. That's, he, that's he... something that can happen. But he will die on the following turn. Yeah, yeah. He, he can do that. But, uh, I mean, it's a you know moral victory, I suppose. But in the end, Dog's going to get the real victory. No question here. Uh... Alright, and uh, after Dog throws these fireballs at the face of Bra Rose and pings him to death, it will be game one going to Dog with his freeze mage. Very well played by him, and he will be leading the series one game to zero. Looks like we're having some issues with lag here, so Bra Rose is just going to concede and uh, get this thing over with. So yeah, Dog gets through with the mage, clears that deck out. Congratulations to him. Good start on the day to him. Uh, not so great for Braros, obviously. A bit uh, unfortunate for him running his rogue into that mage there. But uh, he does have the druid, rogue, and warlock left, whereas Dog has rogue and warlock left. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it was pretty... I mean, it's not that fortunate for Dog, but, you know, it's kind of nice for him to be able to line up the mage versus that rogue. Uh, there were two matchups which were decent, the rogue and the warlock, but uh, if Bra Rose had opened up with that druid, might have uh, spelled some trouble for that mage. It's a tough call in Conquest here. Do you start with your strongest deck, or do you start with your weakest deck? I think that it's, it's very hard to, to claim that there's a benefit to either here. I mean, the druid... From Braros is going to be favored against, I believe, everything except maybe the mirror match. Mm. It's decent. The thing is, though, that the rogue, uh, if you, I was talking about it yesterday, if you have an eight class rogue, then that is actually going to be slightly favored against Druid. And we actually have, I think Dog is, is, is known as 
generally one of the best rogues uh, in the western scene mm. some other rogues would be Mr. Jagged, uh Hyped for example and to really be that good of a rogue you have to be playing uh, I think a rogue since Nax Ramas when you had the crazy Leroy because then you Okay, you learned about the crazy OP Gajazan, but you also learned about sequencing the hero power. You know, for example, turn two, your opponent plays a uh, look toward, do you hero power or do you ZF? You know, things like that. How, the minor mulligan points in terms of saving the weapon versus not saving the weapon. And something the dog definitely knows about. And we were talking about Tyus, you know, making his way from the bottom. And that's something, yeah, in the beta that was was happening. You, you learned the decks. Okay, there were some things that were maybe not exactly the same as they were now, but so many of the of the cards were the same. So you learned a lot. Right. Definitely. And uh, it's kind of funny because, you know, Miracle Rogue was such a strong deck for such a long time and it eventually got nerfed. And it's just one of those things where I think if you've been, you know, a top tier player or maybe even a pro for a long time, it's just something that at some point you had to learn Miracle Rogue, right? I think it was uh, Nyman or something like that. I was like, he was uh, saying something on Twitter and he was showing all his golden classes and had basically, he had, he wasn't even rank 60 with Rogue. He was like 10 or something, barely played the class at all. I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> how could you possibly play Hearthstone and uh, be at a high level without ever playing Miracle Rogue? I was just absolutely baffled. I think the only other player that I can think of that hasn't played, you know, tons of games of Rogue is uh, Life Coach, maybe. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of crazy. I mean, um, back in the summer of 2014, the two strongest decks were. Uh, mid-range druid and rogue, which is uh, pretty familiar if you, if you uh, think about it, right? You know, mid-range druid and uh, patron were similarly really strong quite recently. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I remember I won my first open tournament using just miracle rogue and druid. That's how strong those decks were at the time. Absolutely, yeah, uh, yeah. But do you talk about Nightman and, and uh, life coach? What do they have in common? They started after Nax Dramas. Mm. Uh, so at that point, miracle rogue had already been nerfed, and the people that were playing rogue were the people that had almost exclusively played Rogue, uh, but yeah, fun times though, absolutely, and now we have the shade coming down, this is looking alright, I feel like if, if Barros had coined out the Shattered, he would be in a lot more trouble, but yeah, he has to kind of deal with this uh, Vile Leader. Yeah, Barros had the like, opportunity yeah. as he picks up a second Innervate. He had the opportunity to kind of uh, ramp up and, you know, get a really fast start. But looks like he's instead opting to go for this play and maybe save Innervate for something like uh, use a spell and Innervate an inner, Innervate's a minion out kind of play later in the game, which can be pretty devastating for the Rogue. Uh, in any case, this Lothab's going to shut down this Violet Teacher pretty hard, uh, forcing the counter Lothab from Dog. And uh, overall, I mean, this game is looking kind of even here. It'll be up to the players to make, you know, the uh, requisite plays to take advantage. Yeah, I think Barros played this uh, going for the low step there on turn four was absolutely correct. And also going for this here on turn three. I would have liked to see a turn two sweater. That's just my personal opinion on, or, on the matter. Or turn one sweater. <laughs> or turn <laughs> one sweater even, yeah. That's also a potential... Uh, but yeah, how, how is he going to trade here? Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's just going to be the Shade uh, and the Loth of getting the value trades here. Um, obviously, Dog has a way to... I mean, he has the weapon already set up, so this Shade is almost certainly dead. Uh, as far as the rest of his turn, kind of up in the air. Um, if he picks up something like a prep, it could be pretty huge, could be because he could clear using that Blade Flurry uh, after playing the Azure Drake. But uh, looks like he's going to value... Not playing that and keeping his Lothab alive as long as possible. Pretty painful though, you're not able to really utilize... Um, you're not able to develop anything further onto the board, which is, you know, always always what you want to do as a rogue. Can be sap, here, the sap, yeah, that's strong. That's really, really strong. You want to see sap in this feather, that's absolutely correct. I mean, the only better target to sap, really, realistically, in this deck, I guess would be... Either Ancient of War or claw, Ancient of yeah. War. Just off the top of the head, the two best cards are Ancient of Lore and Ancient of War. But it's not only just the, the quality of card that you sap, it's the timing. And uh, with nothing else to do right now, Dog sapping that and being able to you know gain sole possession of the board is uh, pretty powerful right now. 
Yeah, he is a bit all in on, on this working out, though. He has the Archer Drake backed up combo with a potential flurry, and he can clear with that, and that looks really decent here. Uh, but yeah, I guess my, my problem with sapping the Ancient of Loris is that it is a, it is a battle cry minion, so you do get the value again from it. Uh, Ooh. Whereas I think through the club, but that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good card for Braus to pick up here. Unfortunately, he's down to 11 life, so uh, upside and downside to what's been going on. And this is kind of why we were a bit critical of him in the beginning, uh, just kind of playing it out a bit slow. He is maybe going to get back the board here. Um, and he can even innovate out uh, this through the claw. So this is finally starting to work out for him, him being a bit patient and conservative with his ramp. But, uh, I mean, if he had started the game a bit faster, I doubt he'd be at 11 health right now. Yeah, it only goes back to the turn one. I think the rest has been has been spot on by him. Dog just had a really good hand, and now it will come down to what can Dog do. He gets basically everything. I, mean, I think if if he gets one sap on top of this, then he'll be looking really good. But the deadly poison does come down. He'll be looking at the flurry. Ancient of War is perfect for this scenario here. Uh, what does he start with, though? Um, well, what if he just goes really aggressive here and plays the Savage Roar? I mean, there's 7 damage on board, which means it would be 15 damage to face plus potentially a swipe, which would bring his opponent down to 4, and really force Dog to have healing or he's dead. Um, so that's a possibility. Uh, if he goes for the lore, obviously there's a question of whether you go for cards or healing. How scared mm -hmm. are you of that? Of what uh, Dog just drew with that, uh, with that sprint? And if you play the Ancient of War, obviously you've seen one sap already, but if you play the Ancient of War and Doc has the second sap, you know, it could be game over. So everything here is uh, laden with risk, I would say. I think I like the Ancient of War play the, the best here, uh, because it could be game over if you go for the Savage Roar as well. Mm -hmm. And you have the option potentially next turn as well here. Uh, the draw, I think you have lethal no matter what on the following turn, even if you draw Savage Roar or not, uh, or, or Fortunate or not. Mm -hmm. And Baros goes for the safe play. I, I really really like this. Well played to Baros. Yep, going for that uh, safe play like you mentioned. And uh, what can Dog pick up here? He has the Tinkers, has the Flurry, but that costs him 6 mana to do so. Um, and obviously he would have it would be a 6 damage Flurry, so it would clear. Full clear, yeah. Well, everything Full but the... Yeah. Uh, well, I guess, okay, yeah, he could go Tinkers, oh. SI... Uh, onto the uh, the Haunted Creeper, hit the Ancient of War, and Flurry would be full clear, but he'd be obviously vulnerable to combo, but that might be his only option here. I think so, yeah. Um, well, another potential would be p to go for the Fire of Knives, but I think in this case here, you definitely want the, the uh, board presence with the 3-3. Right. But, I mean, after the Flurry, what, what does Dog have here? He doesn't have an eviscerate to finish this off. Is he, he really going healing. to have to, yeah. He has healing to keep himself in the game and uh, prevent himself from dying to anything but combo. So I think that's a reasonable spot to be in. Um, and once he realizes that he doesn't die this turn, I think he's perfectly fine with going with something like uh, just heal bot and maybe Shredder or heal bot and uh, Vile Teacher and then just smack in the face with the, uh, with the SI7 agent, no matter what comes down. And then from there, just try to... You know, hope your opponent doesn't have combo, which you already know he doesn't have considering this turn. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah, but one more taunt. Uh, we see the heal coming down here, probably we're looking at 11 health. He'll be able to do 4 damage next turn, so... Yeah, I think this is just weirdly going to go away from the combo phase and back into the minion trading phase. Right. Strange to be having that conversation when both people are at 10 health, but that's where we are right now in this match. Yeah, does Braros have lethal if Dog goes up to 18 here? I mean, he has 5 on the board, plus um, an extra 5 yeah, if you consider the Savage Roar, and then he'd have 4 from the, uh, the swipe, so I guess not quite enough to be able to take it down. But uh, yeah, this is exactly what we were, were saying. And now Braros has another decision to make here. Um, I imagine since he doesn't have lethal, he goes for the Such Belcher, but then what else do you do? I don't mind silencing the uh, the sweater here. I think it's 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 strong. You get another mini on the board. You set up for the savage roar. I feel like swiping a three three is not as strong mm -hmm. by any means. Yeah, and you get yeah exactly. You get your uh, 
keep the Grove on the board. In that situation, do you take out one of the 3-3s three instead of the 4-3, just so that you're not vulnerable to Fanonize, which you haven't seen any of yet? I guess so. It's a potential. You could also yeah kill to dump both of the 3-3s three and play a Vulture. It doesn't play as well with the Savage Roar, mm -hmm. but it, it's strong, strong as well, though. Uh, yeah, this game is pretty crazy so far. Uh, every turn, both players going back and forth. Looks like Dog is a sap away from lethal, it seems. As, if that's what they're referring to there. Um, or maybe just a key card, I suppose. They were putting it on the board. Looks like he was one damage off in that instance. Uh, obviously, he didn't have the Tinkers in hand at the moment. Or at that time, excuse me. But, uh, yeah, pretty tough turn for Dog here. Um, everything is honestly viable. He could go for Violet Teacher fan, but then you don't have much mana left. He could go for just starting off with the fan. Maybe you go for the sprint and you can pick up, you know, a, a sap as well as a prep to finish off the game. Just uh, so many things possible here. Looks like he's just going to favor the Violet Teacher and uh, not respecting any sort of burst from Bra Rose right now. I mean, he figures he's probably dead anyway if, if Bra Rose has the combo. That's, this is a perfect thing, yeah. Yeah, this Oof. is pretty nice here because he gets to either clear the board, or at least clear one, at least cl maybe clear the slime. Uh, looks like he's gonna go for a deadly poison rather than uh, the pirate here. Uh, does that leave? I guess it doesn't leave enough damage for Bros to finish out the game, right? It's the same five from hand. Ooh, double savage Roar. How much is that? So four, eight. That's nine, not enough. Yeah. Thirteen, fifteen. Oh, he's one off. Is he one off? Oh, he is one up because he can use the keeper, right? So he's 15 damage. That is very unfortunate for Braros. Wow. Okay. We're not doing the math wrong here, right? It's uh, four each from both of those. So four, eight, and then plus seven. Yeah, 15. 15, yeah. Oof. Uh, and that should even spell the beginning to the end here. I mean... Oh, wow. I think it's nice that Dog actually saved the pirate because they can be comboed with the Tinkers for sure lethal. Right. It takes one more damage, but has the lethal next turn, and one damage is... I mean, he dies to the combo anyway, and he, he survives everything that isn't combo. Yeah, so very smart play by Dog. They're holding back on the pirate. And uh, Braros, the funny thing here is killing off that... Uh, killing off the Vow Teacher makes it so that Dog has guaranteed lethal right here. And that's going to be it. What an insane game. Excellently played by Doug. Uh, a couple of questionable plays by Braros, but overall well played by him as well. Unfortunately, he's going to fall in this game as well. And that's going to be a 2-0 series lead for Doug, clearing his rogue and leaving only his warlock left. I think I want to even, you know, give, give Braros some praise here. I think, except turn one, he played everything spot on. Right, right. Yeah, he did uh, play a pretty solid game there, recognizing when he uh, could put some pressure on his opponent, recognizing when you know he had to clear his opponent's board and stuck it in there right, uh, stuck in that game right until the end, uh, before he was eventually taken out by Dog there. Uh, but now he finds himself really on the back foot. Going to go right into this next game. It's going to be Bra Rose's Druid versus Dog's pretty standard, pretty old school Demon Handlock. Absolutely. This is a counter deck to Patron generally. Uh, and what I'm interested in seeing is does Dog keep the Dark Bomb? Because obviously there is going to be the Darnassus and the Paldus Fetter, even a double Dark Bomb here. But yeah, to talk a bit about the Druid and something that uh, I was actually playing in the early beta with Thais and, and, and those guys. And what we learned there was the strength of the Innovate versus Wild Growth. And, and the Wild Growth is definitely stronger against Control versus the Innovate is way, way stronger against, uh, this is risky, yeah, this is risky. Yeah. I guess he figures he's playing against Sue, this would be way, way strong against Sue, but weak against Handlock. He's gonna get punished here, this is, oof, this is really, really bad. <laughs> well, he does have the Big Game Hunter for a huge swing turn later in the game. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, Dog actually won't be able to play a Mountain Giant on turn 4, so it's kind of a blessing in disguise on Dog's part. But yeah, really risky play by Bra Rose there. Gets punished for it, has to heal power on turn two. And now he's going to be a mana behind for the rest of the game. Yeah, um, the thing is, because you, you, you can innovate something like a Keeper against Aggro, or, or get a swipe out early, or, or get a Taunt oh. when you really need it, but the Hellfire is strong. Yeah. I think I like this idea. I wonder if he drops the uh, Ancient Watcher. I think that might be okay, but there's no, no Taunt coming up with it. 
yeah, next the, few turns here. Yeah, the most obvious play, or the, <clears throat> like the best minion that Brawlers can play here, uh, barring some sort of Innervate, is the uh, Pallet Shutter. So, Dog smartly holding back on that Ancient Watcher, realizing he doesn't want to take the 3 damage on it the, the following turn. Uh, Fairy Dragon comes out, I would say, a bit above average because it can't be uh, targeted by Dark Bomb. But yeah, really heads up play up there by Dog, and Brawlers just kind of uh, chugging along. I imagine he's going to play this Lothal right on curve to provide some more pressure. Yeah, I really like that. Um, Lothal is such a strong minion, honestly. People have been talking about it being overpowered when it came out of Nakshamas for the first time. We haven't been seeing Fugin and Stalag as much, but it's been happening. It's been coming back a little bit. Wonder when that's going to be, you know, in the, all the top decks in the meta, you can still like, because they are a bit undervalued, I feel. Now, yeah, I think so too, actually. Kind of uh, off topic here, but I definitely agree with you. Uh, Fugan and Stalag is, uh, especially if you have a, a Dr. Boom in your deck as well, speaking of the Reno Warlock, uh, the most likely deck to put those guys in, uh, just so hard to deal with. And uh, it's so, I mean, people just can't find the room for two big game hunters in this sort of meta. So yeah, it would be really strong. In any case, we have Dog in kind of a predicament. Uh, if he plays the Twilight Drake, it's more likely for Brawros to have the Keeper, but uh, if you play the Mountain Giant, it's so much more of a blowout if you have the uh, the Big M Hunter. However, I mean, Brawros has the hero power anyway, so it's kind of a similar outcome. So uh, in his mind, maybe Dog thinks it's, it might be better to go for the stronger minion here. Yeah, to explain this a bit, um, so there's going to be one Big M Hunter and two Keepers, so it's twice as likely that the, uh, the Keeper is going to be in the hand. Also, you could keep the Keeper blind against Sue or against any Warlock, right, but you right. couldn't keep the Big M Hunter against Sue. Uh, now, what Dog is thinking about, and something that's very important, and what, in my opinion, separates the uh, the the good good uh, handlock players and the the great handlock players and the good handlock players, is he figures, okay, if there's going to be an innovate combo, I'm dead anyway. So there's no reason talking about that. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm just going to play like he doesn't have a combo, because there's no reason to play around him having combo. So. Yeah. That's exactly what Dog is doing. He's just playing as greedy as possible for the scenario that he has the combo. For that he doesn't have the combo. He's just playing like combo doesn't exist because it can't exist because if you if it exists, you just lose anyway. Right. <clears throat> In any case, uh Dog or excuse me, Bra Rose hits only with the fairy dragon here. Doesn't want to see something crazy like a double molten Shadow Flame Taunt, uh, which could be possible if he hit face with everything there. Going to limit the options of Dog, and he does have Lethal next turn, so uh, going to just play it safe here and go with that option. Um, Dog just going to Dark Bomb here. Uh, Bra Rose, one man off being able to play either of those Savage Roars as he picks up the second one, but uh, yeah, probably going to be seeing... Well, it could be the Ancient of War or Dr. Boom here, and uh, we will see if he decides to go attack into the face. I think there's even some merit to it, but he's already seen one Hellfire. If there's a second Hellfire, he can play the Molten Giants for free. Right. Hmm. I, I think you might be a bit afraid of something like Molten Shadow Flame, uh, which we mentioned earlier. Obviously, if people have been cutting Shadow Flames to deal with aggro a bit better. And, you know, there's not the... I mean, other than the Moltens and the Ancients, of, uh, or the Ancient Watchers, excuse me, there's not the best targets to uh, Shadow Flame, especially with... Uh, you know, this deck not running anything like Power Overwhelming for uh, quite a bit of time now. But Dog definitely on the back foot. Uh, he does have Molten and Taunt, but uh, I don't... Is there any way he can stay alive considering Braros has double Savage Roar in hand? Not really, yeah. You could possibly uh, counter one of them. The thing is, though, I want to talk about his decision, Braros is to attack face. Now, he has lethal no matter what, even if it's a big hunter. So the three damage, eleven or fourteen, it doesn't matter. You have way too much anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, if you had something like a swipe, which he didn't have last turn, if he had the swipe, I could see the potential of, okay, the bombs maybe gonna do about four damage to the face, and if he's at eleven, I could potentially finish off with a swipe. But this here should be lethal, I believe. It's way over lethal, right? Uh, I mean, he, he, yeah. he has both bombs and the fairy dragon and his face to get through these ancient watchers, and he has 11 damage on the Dr. Boom, which is enough by itself. So this is super lethal, uh, depending 
on how the bombs go, obviously. And uh, barring some crazy lag issues, it's going to be Brawl Rose's game. He finally picks one up in uh, a somewhat favored matchup, uh, around you know 55, 45, possibly even 60, 40 for the Druid in that situation. Though we have seen Demon Warlock win that in the past in uh, pro matches, but good play by Brawl Rose there, putting enough pressure on to be able to finish out the game and uh, in the same time limiting Dog's options. We are going to be moving on to either Dog's Warlock versus Brawl Rose's uh, Death Rattle Rogue or against Brawl Rose's Warlock, which I'm having a hard time remembering what that was. Did you, uh, do you remember? Um, I believe he was playing, I believe it was Shu, wasn't it? Right, right, right. It was the zoo with the uh, without the Doctor Boom, but with the Sea Giant, right? So, I'm yeah. um, going to be, I believe, uh, both favorite matchups for Dog, if I'm reading this correctly. Obviously, this is a, a very new school deck in this Rogue, and a very old school deck for Dog using this Warlock. Uh, Bra Rose probably going to be looking to get as annoying a board as possible onto the field, and then from there using those Power Roamings to kind of finish the game all in one swoop. But uh, going to be difficult to deal with the huge minions from Dog, as we see are already in his hand. Yeah, um, but talk a bit about the last game. I felt like Dog actually played that brilliantly. I want to mm -hmm. talk specifically about the turn where he tapped and went for the Mountain Giant. Mm -hmm. I think that was just brilliant, because he, he realizes, okay, I can't play around uh, combo, so I'm just going to play as greedy as possible for him not having combo. That's something... Not many people would have the ball to do would be to tap yeah. when you have a certain threatening board. And he did make the right call, but just ended up ended up being too much pressure from Braros. And I think Braros played it spot on as well. I think the only thing to debate would be the coin Darnassus on turn two. It's not an obvious thing. I think some people would just wait for the turn two because the Darnassus, it's it's something you would absolutely do against Sue, but you absolutely wouldn't do against Handlock. So it's a tough call. But to talk a bit about the the last two matchups now, both of these decks are Sue style decks, and Handlock excels against Sue style decks, especially this one. But it's a tough, tough scenario to play through, though. Uh, so we'll have to see how he can navigate. Right, um, going to be interesting. I mean, Dog has a pretty good hand here. Uh, he's able to coin out this Twilight Drake. Also has. The Void Collar in hand to go with that next turn. Barrow's going to have to have a really interesting decision here whether or not he wants to put on the aggression and start just uh, smacking Dog in the face, or whether he wants to start popping these eggs and, you know, put some more power on the board himself. Uh, pretty tough decision, and, and honestly, I think it requires a lot of um, kind of experience with this deck in order to def uh, determine the right answer because I personally have never played Unearthed Raptor Rogue versus Handlock, have you? I haven't, no, I, but looking at this board, I, I, I prefer Fan uh, Cold Blood here. That's what I, look, look, looks best to me, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could pop both of his creatures here by doing so, and uh, get two 4-4s four on the board as... Whoa, well. but, whoa. Yeah, looks like whoa. looks like he was doing what I originally proposed, which is uh, just going super aggressive, realizing that he doesn't have... Uh, he doesn't have the favorable matchup, so going to go super aggressive here. Uh, I kind of like it, actually, because now Dog is forced to start dealing with these minions, and once he deals with them, a bigger minion comes out. Yeah, Braros definitely realizes that this is not going to be his best matchup, and realizes how he's going to win is through bursts. So he is yeah, just playing like a lot of things don't exist, and I, I mean, you know, Owl in SDG, for example. Right. Uh, Dark Bomb and it's almost GG. That's just how it is. But he, Dog doesn't have the things that he needs to really stop this. And I mean, this is the potential that Barrow says. And I think he just knows this deck better than we do. Um, yeah, so absolutely. Right. Realize, yeah, exactly. Like like we mentioned, just realizing such a, a bad matchup for him and just going aggressive as soon as possible. And it looks like he's getting rewarded for that play. Dog obviously having a lot of threats in hand, but no answers at the moment. And uh, we'll see what Brarose comes up with here. Uh, obviously, that Skulker not going to be able to do too much. Only going to be able to uh, deal two damage against a minion that you don't really want to be popping, anyway. And uh, looks like now he's going to start clearing, though. However, but and that will give Brarose the lead on board. Let's see. Okay, he's not going to pop the Void Collar, and uh, I bet Dog is kind of happy about that. Obviously, he doesn't want to be taking damage to the face, but you know, doesn't want his Void Collar to get popped, quote unquote, for free. 
Mm-hmm. Now... Yeah, very awkward turn for Dog once more. I mean, you can play the Defender of Argus, but you're not developing too much power here. Uh, looks like he's just going to go for the Giant, having, again, no fear, because he can't really have fear in this situation. And uh, is that potentially a game? There's 8 damage on board. Um, 14, Nikon 14, I think. Yeah, he doesn't have anything to activate the Eviscerate. Funnily enough, if, if that uh, SI7 agent were a backstab, he'd have lethal. Uh, even though Baxter doesn't do any damage, but it would be something to activate these eviscerates here. And uh, as Braros, do you just go for it? I think you have to go for it. Yeah, you you have have little on the follow up, but it, I mean, Dog can just now low step, and and there's nothing you can do really. Had he gone for the double eviscerate, the low step wouldn't have really worked. Well, but this that, puts him on pressure. That I is guess. true, but uh, if Dog does go for the low step, then he has to start clearing up this board. And uh, once he starts clearing out this board, then, or once he, if he plays Lothop, he can't put uh, a taunt in place. And uh, he, once he starts clearing out the board, then Braros has, you know, four damage to Dog's face on board. So we might see Dog just go for uh, a taunt here, and that would really, I mean, that would seal the game for him. Or seal the game against him in Braros favor. And that's, yeah, he's going to go for the taunt, realizing that it's unlikely that his opponent has exactly double eviscerate since he didn't do it last turn. And that's going to be game for Braros, surprisingly. Oof. Well played to him, honestly. I think, yeah, it's obviously hard to know what your opponent is, is playing. But from Doc's point of view, I mean, I think Lothar would have been better. It's a tough call, though. I mean, you know, you, like, if you, if you play Lothar, you're not going to die. There's, there's just no way you're going to die. Yeah, but, but this, uh, this, you might, you might die in this case. I guess. Yeah, but it's more well, aggressive. I, I think he's just playing it very risky on purpose and uh, realizing that statistically, it's less likely for your opponent to have double eviscerate or you know a uh, cold blood plus eviscerate plus something to activate those. Um, and oh, actually, cold blood wouldn't even do it, right? Because there's a there's taunts in the way, so it had to be exactly double eviscerate. And uh, unlikely for that to happen. If he plays the Lothab, he can't get a taunt in front. And then from there, uh, there's four damage on board for Braros going directly to Dog's face. And Dog needs a, a heal, and I don't believe he had a heal in hand. Correct? He did have a heal bar actually. Uh, oh, okay, okay. But they talk about okay. There's a different. Now I play a lot of hand luck. It's it's my main deck actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess not in the current meta, not my, my main deck in the current meta, but you know, overall throughout the expansions. Now, it is true that it's unlikely that there's going to be a double this rate, but it's the only way you're going to lose. Right. So, I think that's why you have to play around it, and and it's a bit rough. I mean, you do get the low tap going. You're taking four damage, you're going down to four health, and then you can heal bot on the following turn. You're guaranteed to get another turn, and you're guaranteed to get the heal bot going. You have a Mountain Giant, you have a Molten Giant, and you have Lothep on the turn. Your opponent is running out of things to play, and you can go heal bot taunt next turn. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you'll be at 12 health and have a taunt up. I feel like that was a scenario you couldn't really lose from, so you didn't need to take a risk. Right, right. Definitely makes sense. And, uh, you know, Dog going for the risky play there didn't obviously didn't work out for him in the end. Boros has an interesting choice here. Could go for a lot of damage with that Dragonhawk Rider. Could go for more sustain with that Blood Imp. Or could go for just a, a beefier minion in and of itself with that, uh, that Hungry Crab. But goes for the Dragonhawk Rider to put more pressure on. And uh, this game seems like it's trolling Dog at the moment. Uh, the fact that he has two owls in hand out right now after he really needed those last game. It's furious here, yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, it's easy to say w what the best play is if you see both hands. But I'm, I'm trying to put myself in a situation where you don't know and what possible cards you would want to play around here. Doomguard, uh, this is a bit rough. Yeah, going to be just a double abuse of sergeant, which is not what you want to see. Um, that could have represented a... Ooh. Looks like he made a mistake. Hmm, interesting. Braros has just kind of stopped in his tracks. Look, I mean, he started reaching for the mistake button after he played that abusive sergeant, and oh, he was going for the hellfire. I see. Interesting. No, he didn't have the amount of the hellfire. Yeah. So what was the what was the mistake? I am not too sure. But Braros looks really frustrated here. Really, really frustrated. I mean, there's nothing for him to do. I mean, obviously, it feels pretty painful to go for double abusive sergeant, but he. Really had nothing to do anyway, and, and it looks like we're having some connection issues once more. Finally gets to end his turn, but huh, I'm as per perplexed as you are as for why uh, 
He was confused, or he was uh, worried about that. I want to talk about disconnect here, and when the server has problems. And there was actually a, a team tournament called Gentleman's Cup that happened uh, in Max Ramas, where there were a lot of problems, and they actually had the rule that if there is no lethal, if, if it's lethal, the person gets the win. If there's an unstoppable lethal, whereas there's no card in your entire deck that you could draw to prevent lethal, the opponent gets a win. But if that isn't the case, no matter how far ahead you are, you don't judge win one way or the other, right. generally. Uh, and I think that's actually the way to go. We've had other scenarios at launch where uh, admins are making decisions whether which player wins or loses, and I think it's the right call just to not be making those calls mm -hmm. as admins. So, Braros has an interesting decision here. He could go for just smacking his opponent in the face for 11, <laughs> which just would be kind of interesting, as he picks up the second Doom Guard, not really what he, what he wants to be seeing, but uh, instead, looks like he's going to be taking this a bit slower uh, and developing this Nerubian Egg, setting up for potential... Uh, I mean, potentially a lot of damage next turn. And uh, I think I think it's better not to attack. She doesn't have lethal anyway. Yeah. But, okay. He doesn't have lethal, but I mean, it's still kind of an awkward turn for Dog, as we do see he cannot play the Molten Defender. He can play Molten uh, Sun Already? Fury. He has ten cards in hand though, so he can't tap Molten Sun Fury, unfortunately. But uh, do you just go for that anyway? You just throw that in that Molten and the Sun Fury Protector. I, I kind of like Owl uh, Molten myself. Mm -hmm. but it depends on what he's playing around. And um, I guess you know if you think about it, why would Braros attack from fifteen to thirteen unless he had lethal? Right. So maybe so, so Dog could be you know playing defensive here, and that could be on Braros's mind too. You know, it could be that he's trying to make Dog play defensively, trying to prevent him from playing out his big threats. And uh, and, so, and not playing greedy, and instead making Dog go for a defensive play like the one I mentioned with the taunt. So, uh, could be a heads up play here from Braros going for that aggression even without the lethal. So, basically, a Serbian duo is double bluff from Braros. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, Pretending to play wrong on purpose to make, make Dog play wrong. Like, right. <laughs> that's pretty next level. I've got to get a hand to him. But this, yeah, he has 11 now from hand. and... Yeah. The so funny thing is, if Dog went for Owl Tap uh, Mount Molten Giant, he would have lost here. But uh, yeah, it looks like Brawl was his two damage off lethal. And looks like he's just going to go for it. He discards the Hellfire. Oh no, it's wow. the one card he couldn't lose here. Ah. Well, we do Poor see that there's Brawls. a heal bot in hand, uh, which I assume Dog's going to go for. And now that he's seen that Hellfire, he might be afraid of maybe his second Hellfire. Uh, what, what what do you think of your dog's position right now? Do you think there's a second Hellfire, or uh, is that just too crazy? I think I'd be pretty happy, honestly. Like you can clear both minis, you can play a Hillbot, and and you'll be pretty much set here. Even Dark Bomb the abusive potentially. So yeah, there's no he, he just grabs the Hillbot immediately. There's no thinking needed here. Taunts up. Yeah, I think he's yep. a bit afraid of maybe another Doom Guard and some sort of crazy.